Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that the future of the Star Wars franchise seems to be quite expansive, not just with their books, novels, comics, and video games, but also let's not forget about their new Star Wars TV shows and movies in the mix that will be announced further at Star Wars Celebration of 2022. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, I am on Twitter at MikeZero1. If you guys want to go ahead and give me a follow on there, we do post a couple of fun and entertaining things on there from time to time and interact with you guys further. So, when looking back at the Star Wars prequel trilogy, what made it so special was that cat and mouse game between Palpatine and the Jedi, right? They're trying to figure out exactly who the Sith Lord really is in Episode 3, and that's what really made Revenge of the Sith so powerful as a story. I really do believe that at heart, George Lucas really did an amazing job with that actual movie. It was the best of the prequel trilogy because of that main reason. You had this cat and mouse game between Palpatine, the Jedi, and specifically Anakin Skywalker, right? So now, jumping ahead to where we are now with Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni's approach to the Star Wars universe, they are taking a lot of aspects from the prequels and Star Wars Legends and throwing it over into the Mandoverse and exactly how that's really going to connect further to the Skywalkers and of course Emperor Palpatine for the Mandalorian series. We're going to get into that in just a second. Now, given that Favreau is busy not just with the Mandalorian Season 3, but he's also working on Season 4 on the side, this is where he plans to end the Mandalorian series, at Season 4. And when you think about it this way, we obviously already know that Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau really are working together as a team very closely with George Lucas as well as a trio to really kind of turn things around for the franchise. I mean, they are really working around the clock to really making sure that Star Wars can thrive and survive. Taking a lot of elements from Legends, I believe, is going to save the franchise if done correctly. Now, on top of all of this, all right, the most impressive thing about Jon Favreau is the fact of what he's doing now with the recast of, of course, key characters in the Skywalker saga. Now, with Disney and Lucasfilm already preparing to tell new tales of Luke Skywalker in multiple projects for the Star Wars universe, both Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are preparing to make big announcements that involve Luke Skywalker and other fan-favorite characters, a part of the new Star Wars universe. Now, it's described that one major plan by Favreau and Filoni is to recast both Palpatine and Luke Skywalker for The Mandalorian Season 4 that is being planned to drop in 2023 on Disney+. Plus. Now, one, pl one plot element for the Mandaverse is to introduce a young Palpatine clone in the series that is set to be portrayed by Bill Skarsgård, who has already been in the talks with Jon Favreau for quite some time now. Now, the recast of Palpatine is already concrete and is said to be announced at Star Wars Celebration, along with the recast of Luke Skywalker being portrayed by Sebastian Stan strictly for Season 4 in a new young Luke Skywalker series, dubbed as Star Wars Jedi Knight. Now, one major scene that is already in the storyboarding process involves Luke Skywalker hunting down a secret base that contains tons of Palpatine clones, where Luke is set off to destroy all of them one by one, only for one of Palpatine's clones to be left alive, much like what happened in Star Wars Dark Empire. Now, it's described that Favreau is taking many pieces from Star Wars Dark Empire and creating that in the form of live action, giving the fans a full-on lightsaber duel between Palpatine and Luke on a new world that will be unveiled in the show. Further, both Bill Skarsgård and Jon Favreau already have been going back and forth on Palpatine's new design for the series that is truly going to create a more violent and mobile Palpatine than ever before. Lucasfilm's plan is to not only take story pieces from Dark Empire, but also from the Thrawn trilogy as well for the Mandiverse. And let me just say one thing right there, is that taking a lot of aspects from Dark Empire and the Thrawn trilogy and combining it into one is absolutely a big win on Lucasfilm's part. If they can do that successfully, I think that they can really take a lot of those lost fans and bring them back into the universe. Kind of really use that as a way to really make Star Wars all the more successful. However, recasting Palpatine was always a plan by Favreau and something that he wanted to do in order to have fun with cloning. Cloning is said to be a big part of the Mandalorian series, and that Grogu is said to have some deep ties to the cloning process in the Star Wars world that will be unveiled in Season 3 next year. 
Palpatine is described to have, of course, multiple scenes in Season 4, and will be the big finale to the Mandalorian series as Jon Favreau plans to end it all at Season 4 before turning to other Star Wars TV shows for the franchise. Now, it's said that new secrets of Plagueis will also be unveiled for The Mandalorian Season 4 that is going to change how fans view the Star Wars prequel trilogy and more. George Lucas is said to be heavily involved with the Bill Skarsgård version of Palpatine, as well as Sebastian's role as Luke Skywalker in order to take, of course, more of a complete role and having that full-on duel for The Mandalorian's end. Favreau is said to actually make this a very unique one and that it will fit directly into the Star Wars franchise moving ahead to please fans properly. Now here's the thing about Favreau's approach, alright? Now, like I say, Dark Empire, I do suggest that you guys go ahead and read either the comics or go ahead and listen to the audiobooks or the radio dramas. They are all over the internet, you guys can go ahead and find them. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, some fans out there don't like Dark Empire as much as you would imagine, but I do believe that Dark Empire is a great continuation of both Luke, Leia, Han, Palpatine, and more, and how that really kind of just shows us how powerful Palpatine really is and what he's able to accomplish. Now, we have already seen in the Secrets of the Sith book, there is a specific device that could very well lead to immortality, and we'll discuss that a little bit more in the coming days. But when we actually dive further into what Palpatine is able to do, is the essence transfer technique. This was already pretty much explained to us in the novelization of Episode 9, as well as loosely in, of course, The Secret of the Sith comic, or the book, I should say, not the comic. But when you go ahead and look at everything of what Favreau and Filoni are trying to accomplish, by recasting both Palpatine and Luke to create this full-on duel between Skywalker and Palpatine, I think it's beautiful, I think it's fantastic. You know, uh, we saw that confrontation in Episode 6. It wasn't necessarily a duel, quote-unquote, but that's exactly what Favreau wants to do. He wants to give us that Dark Empire-esque duel that we all were able to see and hear in the comics and the audiobooks, and now Favreau is trying to make that a reality. And I cannot wait to see exactly how the fans are going to react to that in 2023, which is when they plan to end the Mandalorian series before moving on to other Star Wars TV shows that will continue the story of those characters specifically. So, with that being said, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.